So a lot of the times you think if you want to find some good wild mushrooms you have to go really deep into the woods, uh, really off trail, and search all over the place. But that's not always the case. A lot of the times you can find amazing mushrooms in urban environments. And just to prove a point, I'm here walking around my neighborhood in a totally urban environment and I just found an enormous patch of morel mushrooms. They're growing all over the place. And this is pretty typical actually for morel mushrooms. A lot of the times you'll see them growing in mulch, new landscaping, uh, new neighborhoods, and they'll just be growing right on the side of the trail in little piles of mulch in these huge flushes. So can you see them yet? Even though they're in these mulch piles and uh, you know they're pretty obvious, sometimes it can be really hard to see and you could easily walk by this and not even notice that you missed them. But when we take a closer look, boom, here's a bunch more on mushrooms. Boom, here's a bunch more. Over here, here's another huge cluster. Just across the way over there, I found an even bigger cluster. Morel mushrooms are pretty easy to identify, and once you've seen them once, there's not much likelihood that you'll accidentally misidentify them. Even though there are a bunch of different species of morels, they all do share some similar characteristics. First of all, they have a pitted cap that almost looks like a sponge or a brain. The key term is pitted, which differs from the folded look you'll see on some of the lookalikes. The cap is usually yellow or yellow-brown, but they can also have a burnt appearance and almost look black. Of course, if you're ever unsure of the identity of a morel, cut it in half and take a look at how the stem attaches to the cap. For true morel, the stem will be hollow and the cap will be directly attached to the stem. Morels also typically grow in the spring, not too long after the snow melts. So be sure you're looking for them at the right time of year. There are two other species that people sometimes confuse for a morel. The first is Verpa bohemica, which has a folded cap instead of a pitted cap and has a stem that connects only to the very top of the cap. The other is Gyrometra esculenta, which has a red or brown folded cap and an inside that isn't hollow or clearly defined. Of course, anytime you're collecting wild mushrooms, you should be confident you know what you have, and if you're unsure, it's best to consult an expert or your local mycological society. Now there seems to be a lot of debate on whether you should pull the mushroom out of the ground or whether you should cut it uh, versus the overall health of the underlying organism. And a lot of people say that if you pull the mushroom out, you're going to harm the underlying mycelium, you're going to harm the morel, and reduce the chances that it's going to show up there again. Um, I don't really know if this is true. I don't think it is. From all the reading that I've done, uh, there's been research, a lot of research put into this, and I guess that it doesn't matter whatsoever whether or not you pull the mushroom or you cut it off. Personally, I like to cut them off just because you end up with a lot less dirt on the stem of the mushroom that you have to clean up before you're able to eat it. So whether or not you pull or pull the mushroom, um, I really don't think it matters. Pretty much just do whatever's the most convenient for you um, and whatever ends up being the least amount of work. So one thing you got to think about when you're harvesting mushrooms or any food really in an urban environment like this is you got to wonder is there any you know chemicals or pesticides or have they sprayed for anything in this area um, and to be honest I'm not really too sure. I mean I think it's pretty okay I haven't seen any signs up that they've sprayed uh, for mosquitoes or sprayed for pests or anything uh, or if they've you know applied any kind of chemicals to the ground. I don't really know. So that's always a consideration uh, you got you to gotta think about when you're harvesting mushrooms in an urban environment. Um, but I don't know, for the most part, I think it's pretty good where we are. I think these mushrooms are uh, pretty safe to harvest and consume. But always, uh, if you're going to be eating mushrooms that you find in the wild, for sure do your own research. Number one, make sure you know what the species is that you're eating, but also make sure that you know um, that it's generally safe to consume considering everything else. Okay, so I'm not going to harvest all of them. I think I definitely have enough uh, for what I need, so I'm going to leave some behind, maybe let some get a little bit bigger, or leave some for uh, somebody else to find. Um, 
But if you do have morel mushrooms, you don't have to eat them all right away. Uh, you can dry them, you can, some people can even freeze them, uh, or you can can them. Uh, there's all sorts of things you can do uh, to store them. So I think I'll save that for another video though. I'm gonna go home and uh, prepare these mushrooms. But uh, yeah, just if you do get a chance, head out in your local neighborhood and see if you might be able to find some morel mushrooms of your own. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Tony from FreshCatMushrooms.com and we'll see you next time.